This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. It's Alex Bennett. See what it says up there on the screen if you're looking at us on Facebook Live. It's The Ramble, and it goes until midnight tonight. Yes, midnight tonight, Eastern Daylight Time. Right now, it's about five minutes past 10 o'clock on the East Coast of the United States. So wherever you are in this wide world of ours, accommodate for that. And if uh, it's the, it's, it, it should be that time here, then you're listening to it live. Otherwise, it's a, it's a recording. And uh, hey, it's Wednesday, so uh, we got a friend to talk to. Ladies and gentlemen, a man who are trying to get away from dial-up. This was what we talked about last week. The only man I know who has dial-up. For landline internet. Larry Brown. Landline Larry. <laughs> <laughs> landline Larry Bowles Brown. Yes, sir, Larry. You're the only guy I know, okay, who has dial-up. Uh. <laughs> And I think it's wonderful. I think it's wonderful. I think that you should stick with it. You know, uh, it, it's a technology. That, that, I'm surprised they even do it anymore. That's what's amazing is that they do well, it. I was surprised that so many people still have it in San Francisco, of all places. Yeah, yeah. And you know who, you know who offers a dial-up service for $5 a month? Who? Fries. Who? Fries, the uh, oh fries, yes, fries. Your favorite store. Oh, fries is this. In case people don't know about fries, fries is a wonder of the modern world, or it was. Uh, it was a supermarket, <laughs> and then one day, I don't know how they, I don't know what morning somebody wakes up and goes, you know, we're in the supermarket business. Let's start selling computers. I, I don't know what day that happens. It, it, hold, it was a supermarket one time. It was a supermarket. It was a supermarket. I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And so they, uh, this was down the South Bay, and so they decided to stop serve selling food, and they started selling computers. And they became this huge computer store. I mean, folks, you go in there, it was gigantic. You've been there. Oh, they're fun stores. They are, they are enormous. I go to the one in uh, Sunnyvale. Yeah, yeah, that's, that, that's, that's the big one. That's where it started, I think. And uh, it, it's huge. And uh, they have a lot of stores now all over Northern California, and they're huge. And in fact, there was this big uh, box store that opened in Sacramento that was the largest electronics dealer or store in America in physical size. And it went out of business, so they bought it, and that became Fry's in Sacramento. And they've got all this crap. And I don't know, I haven't been there in years, so I don't know how modern it is right now, but I'm sure it still has everything new and fancy and schmancy. Oh, yeah, it's and, got everything. And every bolt and nut and soldering iron you could possibly lay your hands on. And uh, you, you just went in there like, uh, do you like uh, stationary stores? Uh, not a huge fan. I used to be a big fan of stationary stores. I would just look... I, I, and I'm the messiest guy you know. I'm so disorganized, it's ridiculous. But I had took great pleasure in, in, in looking at things that would make me organized. So Fry's had that same appeal. I mean, while I wasn't going to buy everything in the store, that was the store where I could get my whole life in order electronically. So it is surprising to me that a store with this much history of, of technology that its greatest claim to fame is it's only selling dial-up. Yeah, the guy told me. I went in there for some, and he goes, oh, we were laughing about my dial-up. He goes, oh, you know, we we have our own. We sell it for $5 a month, fries, fries.com. You can get your own dial-up service. I, I just can't believe it. I mean, I can't believe it. It's so slow, Larry. It's it so is. slow. It's painful. I mean, it must take you a half hour to get a letter. Uh, sometimes it does. I mean, Literally. When, when you go for your email, how long does it take for your email to download? Uh, it can take, uh, you know, I've been at, my sister's got a good computer, so it's just, we, you click on, it's right there. When I click on an email, it'll take like seven or ten seconds. And then if I go to another site or something, sometimes it can take literally ten or fifteen minutes to download something and pages on websites must take forever to load oh, in or yeah that's literally 10 or 15 minutes 
I'm, just, I'm sitting there watching the green bar go so slow. Larry, Larry, Larry. Two th- I know this is week number two of, of uh, Bubs and technology, but believe me, it's purely entertaining for me. Anyway. <laughs> well, I wish you were here to help me. I, I would get the high speed today if you could help me set it up. Uh, well, I might be coming out for one reason or another in a while. Uh, yeah. And when I do, the first place I'm stopping is your place, and we're gonna eat, and we're gonna buy you, get you into a computer. Whether it's I would I would suggest a, a, either a laptop or an iPad, but I would say a laptop probably for you. Okay, so if I if I get a if I get high speed through AT and T, how how quickly can I be in business? They're gonna I have to get a modem, whatever that is. Well, no, no, they bring all that out to the house. They, they you don't you don't have to get any of that shit. Okay. The modem uh, automatically comes, and it has what's called a router. We won't. We won't. We won't. We're not going to get into the heavy nomenclature here, because if we do, I'll, I will lose you at some point, and you will never go to high speed. Okay. Uh, but what happens is they come out to your house, folks. Follow me on this. I know I'm telling you tales out. They of actually school. come out, or they send you the other stuff. No, they. Well, some places, if you want to, they'll send it to you. But they can. AT and T will come out and install. And what they will install is they will, to begin with, they will bring a line into your apartment, which you probably don't have, uh, a high speed line, and then uh, they will connect that to a modem. Uh, and that modem will connect to your computer, to the input okay. of your computer, to what's called. They can't. Uh, they can't go through my phone line for that. No, I, I don't. I don't think so. They they usually use a dedicated line. That's no big deal. Every apartment house, they can. They can. Believe me, they can do it. Okay. Uh, it, 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 do you have? Are you on a cable system, for instance? Uh, no. You're not on a cable system because if no. you were, they would do it through. You could go through the cable company. And get your stuff. Uh, and it would probably be maybe even cheaper than AT&T. Why don't you... Wait a minute. Hold on a second, Mr. Luddite. Why no, <laughs> why no cable? Uh, I have no... I don't have... I think they. I think cable is available in the building, but I don't have it. Well, why not? I, there's not that much I want to see. But cable also could supply you with the high speed, Right. Yeah, you know, and uh, gee, you don't. So you've never, you don't know what Netflix looks like, huh? No, <laughs> I've got. Uh, I get the. I, I still get free TV over the air. Yeah, I know they do that still. Yeah, you, you had to get a spatial and a converter box to get the signal. Yeah, yeah, but uh, gee, Larry, oh God, you know, how old are you now? I like to be a middle. I'm coming on Medicare, which okay. is another thing we got to talk about. So you're you're what 65, 66? It, it's, it's 60 in September. Six, six, Medicare kicks in. 65. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which you tell me is great. It's terrific. You'll love it. But I'm I'm wondering if it's too late for us to get you into all this other shit. <laughs> you know. I mean, I forget more about this every day than you've learned. I know. Well, you were on this from the get go. Yeah, you know something though. But I, I, I am getting the point. You know, I'm getting to the point where I'm becoming a luddite, where I don't know if all. You know, I saw the when I was a kid, I saw the promise of the future, right? And I dreamed about the promise of the future, and was kind of sad that maybe I wouldn't live long enough to see it. But I have lived long enough to see what I expected would happen, plus some more. But what I found is the things that I thought were going to be good have turned out to be very evil. Uh, And it's only because I think it's the question of the application of the technology by people and by their own prejudices and their own uh, fucked upness. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. in, In applying, you know, here we've got something wonderful. Let's use it for the wonderfulness. No, but we can also use it to make war. Or we can use it to spam people or to send out uh, uh, mail they don't want to get. Or, you know, on and on and on. So for every good purpose that this future that I envisioned would bring, it brought like uh, a Pandora's box worth of, uh, of, of evils. And, yeah, it and, destroyed and, our privacy. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, like, for instance, right now, when you look at the country and the way it's at, it's the way it is right now because of technology, because of people using the Internet to spread lies, to spread rumors, to spread falsehoods, to make people believe things that don't exist. I mean, you've got things like the Russians hacking the computers so that our election gets fixed. I mean... That's the prom- That's not, not the promise of my future and the one that I thought was going to happen. I thought the one I was going to happen, all that shit would be gone. Yeah, it's, uh, it's bad. You know, so technology has, has not really brought us the promise of the future. I didn't even get the one thing that I thought I would have by now, and that was the household robot. <laughs> you know, every, uh, uh, that, and the fl- that and the flying car, n- neither of those. Are existing right now, uh, and the household robot has been. You know what somebody once said to me? My friend Paul said it to me, and he was right. He said, "The what has happened, and we didn't realize it is the home of the future that we envision really has become the office of the future. All the things we thought were going to be applied to the home are actually been applied to the office, and." Um, he was kind of right. You know, most of the heavy technology that we use is all aimed at business. And the stuff we get at home, like our, you know, Amazon Echoes and our uh, iPods and our little stuff like that, this is flotsam and jetsam. Yeah. But, there, you know, there's no household robot. I can't flip a switch right now and the house cleans itself. I can flip a switch and the house will clean, the house will clean itself if it's the cleaning woman downstairs ringing up. You know, well, don't they, don't they, they've got the Roomba, don't they? <laughs> the, the that Roomba. doesn't look very effective. You know, I hate to get old with a Roomba, because when you begin <laughs> to think that when you're sitting there in your house all by yourself, you know, all 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 your children and your wives are gone, and you're still alive, kind of drooling on the couch, and then all your closest friend is this little thing that goes around the room cleaning the floors. <laughs> I don't want to be that guy, okay? <laughs> you know, um, and and, uh, and I don't want you to be the guy who suddenly, when he um, <laughs> when he uh, when he has a heart attack, rather than having a, uh, a, a sensor that realizes you're having a heart attack and calls your doctor immediately, because I have friends who have like pacemakers, and they're attached to the phone. And if something goes wrong with that pacemaker at the hospital, they know about it and they send somebody right out. Wow, that's great. But that won't happen to you because you don't have high speed. I'll be. I'll have a heart attack on dial up. Yeah, you, you, yeah right. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, he, he started transmitting two years ago and it, we just realized he's dead. Uh, but. Uh, well, what? The other thing I keep hearing about technology is that uh, there's going to be so few jobs left that they're talking about. They might just have to give the government will have to give everybody an income because there won't be any work. Well, I mean, I I don't know where the work's going to come from. I I think that um, uh, it's not the work that is going to be available isn't the kind of work most people want, you know. And um, I mean, I I look about. There are 40 coal miners who are going to get jobs now working in a coal mine because they're opening one, and Trump is saying how wonderful that is. 70 people going to go down into a coal mine again. Wow, what a wonderful life we've given them again. (laughs) Black lung. (laughs) Black lung disease, cave-ins, you know, dead family members. Oh, yeah, all that. Wonderful. We're bringing back coal. And then the result of the use of coal. Okay, so um, those 70 people should have been trained to do something else. It's only 70 people. Is that all? Yeah, and they could have been trained to do other things. I mean, other things that, if you're willing to go down into a coal mine, get black lung disease, risk avalanches, get a bad case of claustrophobia, whatever, if you're willing to do that, I think somehow you'd be willing to learn how to work customer support somewhere for the same amount of money. <laughs> you know? Uh, but, but, but they're going, oh, we're going to get our jobs back. No, you're not. Coal is an old deal. You know? 
In fact, everything Trump's trying to do is old stuff. Really, uh, old, really old school. I, the, that, that's probably the worst death, being buried alive, I would think. Uh, no, um, uh, being in radio without a job. I think. <laughs> this is the worst possible death. I always wanted to live long enough to die on the air, and I probably won't, you know. Well, it'd be great if you were on the air. I'd like to just you know, be able to go to a commercial break and say, we won't be right back. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> What's the... Uh, I keep hearing that the AM dial may actually disappear, someone told me, in two years. Well, you yeah, don't tell the AM dial that, though. They think they still... They're like a... Radio is like a snake with its head cut off, and it still thinks because the bottom part is working, the top part is alive, you know? Um... Uh, it's dead. It's a dead. It's a dead issue, and you're right. You know, I see in a few years all those AM uh, spectrum, the AM spectrum, uh, being put over to just sending data. You know. Yeah, like, uh, the big station here, KGO. Half the time they 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 sell it. Uh, they're selling vitamins. These companies buy two hour blocks of time in a weekend. They just sell vitamins for three hours. And this used to be one of America's great radio stations. That was a huge station, yeah. For about 35 years, we thought it was the number one station in San Francisco because of the rating system. Then when they changed the rating system, all of a sudden we found out they were number 20. Um, but it, it, it really was once a station that was unbeatable. And mm -hmm. they were number one every month. And uh, all of a sudden, it all fell apart when they went to a different kind of uh, system, where it was a more realistic system in which some, you know, it was you were m being monitored as to what you were listening to, and then that recorded, and it changed the whole the whole nature of the thing. And all of a sudden, you've got a station that once was the biggest station in San Francisco, is no longer the biggest station in San Francisco, and oddly enough. The number one talk station in San Francisco is an NPR station. Be yeah. Because uh, all of a sudden the ratings came out and it showed that to be true because prior to that they had never rated the NPR station. So you've got a nonprofit station that's the number one talk station in San Francisco and they that's can't amazing. make money out of it. <laughs> Even to monetize everything else in this town. Oh, but what do you need radio for? What do you need AM for? Every night I go on. I do a show for two hours. What? I'm going all over the world. Anybody can hear me. I'm even doing it so you can see me. I have a video we're running now of it. Uh, and, um, you know, who needs AM radio? Who needs FM? I'll tell you who. Larry Brown, who doesn't have dialogue. <laughs> I, only has I dialogue. need it badly. Well, it, well, you're, you're probably, it's the old people probably that are benefiting by this still existing. Yeah, you know? they say that the young people don't listen to radio at all. Well, they, they, have other, they have other ways of getting their information or lack thereof. I mean, I'm not mm -hmm. saying that the information on the Internet, the, the, the great thing about old information, the way it used to be, when you used to have a TV station and networks and so on, is everything that was said was vetted. Because you had a responsibility to the FCC and so on. Every word that went out had to be vetted. You couldn't just lie. All right? Uh, and and that, uh, that was wonderful. Now, you can say anything you want to. No, nobody's going to call you to account for it. No. It's like, it's like the world's biggest rumor mill. Well, I mean, you have guys like uh, Alex Jones, who's a talk show host on the Internet, who has a huge audience. I have to tell you, because I, I look at his, his numbers because I look at mine, which are puny by comparison, and he's got a huge number, and he just goes on and lies all the time. He's the guy that said that uh, um, uh, Hillary Clinton was running a prostitution ring out of a pizza parlor in Philadelphia. <laughs> and so some guy went in with a gun and started shooting up the place. <laughs> and there was nobody there to tell Alex Jones, I'm sorry, Alex, you can't put this on the air because, quite frankly, there's no way in hell this is true. Wow. Yeah. So he's huge. I haven't heard of that He's guy. huge. People listen to him. People pay attention to him. He lies through his teeth. 
Recently, he had to make another apology. I think he had to pay out some money for legal action. I mean, but this guy just, you know, he's a piece of work. And yet, because it, you know, it, it's kind of like, remember we used to say sometimes, it's, it's got to be true. I saw it on TV. Mm-hmm. Bullshit. It's not necessarily true because you saw it on TV. Sorry. Um, that's the case, you know. Uh, it, it just because it's on the internet doesn't mean it's true. In fact, if you see it on the internet, I would check other sources. I would be, be, be like having a doctor for a second opinion. I'd get a second opinion on anything you see on the internet. Or a fourth or fifth. I mean, even, yeah, even my, my wife, who's an intelligent woman, will say to me, did you see today? It's blah, 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 blah. And I go, that's not true. She says, I saw it. It was there. Yeah. She looks it up and she read it wrong. <laughs> or if she if she didn't read it wrong, uh, it was a piece of absolute misinformation. I think somebody the other day she came in and said, "You hear who's dead?" And it turned out they weren't dead. It was uh, oh no, Willie Nelson. You hear Willie Nelson's dead? And I said, "Really, he died?" And I went, I looked mm-hmm. online, and it said Willie Nelson <laughs> death hoax. <laughs> You know, it seems like there's one death hoax a month now. Well, Willie Nelson says there's a death hoax about him about once a month. Wow. You know, so, uh, and he, 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 he to, to the credit of the people who started the rumors, he looks dead to begin with, you know. Yeah, for some time now. I for some say. time. <laughs> I'm surprised he looks like that and is still alive, okay? <laughs> uh, uh, and God bless him because I love him and I hope he lives forever. He's, a, he's, a, he's genuinely a, a godsend to the, to the business. But all I'm saying is, is that, that, it it becomes a, a rumor mill and becomes really the greatest source of misinformation that we have in our lives. And yeah, we're living in the age of misinformation. When when Trump talks about fake news, he's doing it to take the news business and uh, negate it and uh, try and prevent it from having, you know, whenever it puts a story on about him, he can say, well, that's the fake news and whatever. But But he's kind of right. You know, it is fake news. But... Not yeah. just that news. Fox News is fake news. All of them all are, are yeah. not vetting like they should be vetting things. And they're not asking the questions they should be asking. And an enlightened press is a very important function of this country. So Yeah, there's no good uh, journalism anymore. Yeah, there really is no good journalism anymore. And uh, it, it's sad. And I stopped watching uh, broadcast television, and I have started watching it again. Uh, after about six months, because I, I quite frankly felt I didn't know anything anymore. And uh, I watch it now with a great deal of skepticism, and I don't, you know what I do? I turn it off once the pundits come on. Mm-hmm. When, they, when they're saying, here's the news, and Sessions said this today, and uh, Comey said this, and Trump said that, and this, they're direct quotes, and blah, 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 that's fine. The minute they say, now we have Bob and Sam and, and Margaret to sit here and tell us what they think, I turn the station yeah, because yeah. now they're going to start telling me what I should think of the news. And I don't want that. I want to experience the news and then I want to take it into my own head. And then I want to do my own interpretation and not have somebody else tell me what the news is. So call me a spoiled brat. Well, you know. We're old school, but uh, that's a better school. Well, I, I don't know that it's a better school. You know, uh, it's 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 different. I, I, I the other day I was saying, what if I was a, like twenty today? Uh, where would my life be going? What would I be doing? You know, I mean, how would you find a profession? Larry? I don't think it, I, I, I'm I'm glad I'm not young now. That would be. Uh, I don't think the future looks very bright and looks like kind of a glum world. Well, it could be a glum world, but you know, I'm I'm sure that the world there was somebody back when you and I were being born saying I'd hate to be born right now because this is a pretty glum world. You yeah, know. it's probably always the case. But. You know, I mean, World War II certainly wasn't a happy time. You know, uh, concentration camps weren't a wonderful idea. You know, there's always been some kind of horrible thing going on, but somehow I just wonder what would I do today? Where, what direction would my life take? Could I become a performer? At my age, if I were 20 and in show business, I'd probably be a has-been by now. You, well, there wouldn't be radio to get into, pretty much. There wouldn't be radio to get into, so I'd do some kind of Internet thing 
that lasted t three minutes and had 10 million viewers, you know. Anyway, we sound like two old farts, don't we? Uh, I guess because we are. Cause, it's very it, sad. Well, you don't have to bring that up. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we've been talking with the inimitable Larry Bubbles Brown about yes. what it's like to live back in the days of the Civil War. Uh, and I'm just hoping you can get me on high speed soon. This has got to change. I got to get out there, if nothing more, to make your life better, yeah. Larry. One of my favorite people in the whole world, and uh, just uh, stay above room temperature, okay? I'm trying, man. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. hold on a second. Let me, let me get my cap. I don't like looking bald on the air. I don't know why. It doesn't matter. It's a handsome look, isn't it? Is it? I don't know. There we go. There we go. Anyway, let me, uh, let me, uh, thanks, Larry. We appreciate that. And uh, it's going to be time now to go to our citizens panel. I just got a thing you know, from Jeff Stein, who calls us every night who wrote me to say he's on the New Haven train and probably won't be able to call in tonight. But if you're listening to us, uh, uh, Jeff, uh, you, know, you will be missed. And he, he sent me the note, and it said, a, a Jeffrey Knight. And uh, thank you so much, Jeff, for sending that. But if you can call, somehow you get home in time or whatever, someplace where you can call, do it. Also, and uh, oh, by the way, the lines are now open. Uh, to people out there who who say, well, I, you know, I don't have my, I'm not at home with my desktop, and I, I don't, you know, if you have Skype on your cell phone, if you have Skype on your iPad, if you have Skype on your uh, your Android uh, uh, device, uh, you can call us using any of those, and we can get your picture on the air. Now, it used to be that it, when whenever with the old program. Uh, Skype program when when someone would call us for instance uh, that would be a problem uh, getting them on uh, but uh, getting the picture on now when you're using uh, 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 say an iPhone or a, an Android device or anything like that is not a problem just make sure that what you're doing is you're using yes you're using a, a Skype uh, and uh, that will that will do it for you you can also call us, you know, uh, 347, you know, I can never can remember the number. I thought I almost had it here for a second in my mind. If you go to gabnet.net, all these uh, things are there. 347-352-0079. 347-352-0079. It is a number I can't seem to remember because it has no mnemonic. It has no uh, flow to it. See, 347, there's no way I can remember that, okay? 352, that doesn't scan in any particular way. 0079, well, that means that you can call us using that, okay? And uh, if you do that, we will uh, uh, be able to hear you, but you won't be able to see us, and we won't be able to see you. But nevertheless, you can join in on the conversation uh, you kind of have to speak up and yell at us and say, I want to talk now, because what we do with people who are using Skype, since we can see them, is we tell them that if they want to talk, just raise your hand, and I'll, uh, I'll recognize you. So, anyway, this is the point in the program where I wait for people to call, and uh, since uh, 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 Jeff is not calling tonight, I'm sure we will be hearing from Phil shortly. Yes, I see Phil is signing on. See, I can see when people sign on to their Skype. Uh, and so we'll be able to we'll be able to talk with uh, with with Phil in just a moment, uh, and we'd like to talk with you. And if you've never called the program before, just to, you know, Gabnet Live is the Skype address. Gabnet Live, and uh, even if you don't ask to be made a contact, we can now get you on the air. Okay? Hey, look, look who's uh, who's showing up, ladies and gentlemen, um, our old friend. Uh, I think old friend. I'm not sure. I, I supposedly knew him. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 Phil Meyer. Hello, Phil. Hey, it's another wonderful evening in the neighborhood, isn't it? it? Yes, it's a really n another wonderful night in the neighborhood. So how are you today? Oh, here we go. Rob Alfano is calling. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Why am I, why am I getting that, that? Okay. 
Here, let me get that Rob on. Uh, hello, Rob. You there? There we hey, go. How are you? See? Now, is, there's never the first caller curse anymore. Do you notice that? Yeah. Uh, am I the first? Oh, I'm the second caller. The second caller. But there's no first uh, uh, caller curse any longer. And I forgot to update my Skype. There's a uh, there's a new update. Uh, just got better. I'll dismiss yeah, no, it. No, that's what they always say. Usually what it means is we want you to go to the new one so we can avoid doing something else. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, it just got better. Oh, that's terrific. That's terrific. So uh, you and Bubbles had a uh, tech show. Yeah, basically. Well, with <laughs> Bubbles, it's not a tech show. You know, there's no tech involved. Yeah. Uh, the guy still has dial-up, okay? Mm -hmm. doesn't, have ca doesn't have cable TV. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and his computer, I think, probably... Oh, it still has XP on it. Wow. <laughs> uh, Does that I don't think that supports Skype. Uh, it doesn't you, even support. It doesn't have any more patches. It's not even. Shouldn't even be on the internet. Right. Yeah. But you yeah, know, the Russians will help with that. It was maybe. Yeah, the, really. It was maybe the best operating system that Microsoft ever created. Yeah. You know, it was a good operating system, it, no question. It was a great one. And then, they, then they replaced it with a thing called remember ME. Oh, that was awful. It was just ME was before that. No, ME was after that. I think. No, no? was before Emmy came out for the millennium in 2000. Yeah. And when did XP come out? I think XP was earlier. I think XP was the replacement. Seven? No. Uh, XP was the replacement. Yeah, what? I think you're right. Uh, yeah. XP, XP was Windows better. Windows 7 replaced XP. Windows 7 replaced yeah, XP. But there were some Windows ones before uh, ME. Oh, uh, there was 98, hey, 98 hey, uh, second edition. I'll give you one you 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 you, you may or may or may not remember, Bob. So, that one I don't no. remember. You don't remember Bob? No. They decided that they would come out with a operating system the kids would love, and so they came out with Bob, and it was really yeah. simple, you know, and uh, yeah. So. Was that what toys? company did that? That's not Microsoft. That no, was Microsoft. It was Microsoft Bob? Look it up. I'm going to do that because, I mean, uh, I've never heard of it. Wait a minute, wait a uh, you know, before, uh, around the same time Microsoft came out, I had CPM. Uh, CPM was uh, a competing system. And uh, it used to have two five-and-a-quarter-inch floppies, at least on the machine I had. That was, I think One that was Commodore. Data. That was Commodore, wasn't it? Uh, no, uh, Commodore it was a machine. It might have used CPM. Mm -hmm. But uh, CPM was an operating system. And what happened was the guy who invented CPM got the first call from IBM mm -hmm. and didn't return it. But Bill Gates did. And you know the future. Oh, oh uh, yeah. Yeah. It was, it was the, yeah. I, now I know what you're talking about. What you're talking about CPM. But anyway, um, uh, Microsoft Bob was a Microsoft software product that was released March 10th, 1995 and discontinued in early 1996. The yeah, program, that was why I missed it because it was before I was doing IT. I was still a director in television. The program was intended to provide a more user-friendly interface for the Windows 3.1 and I Windows remember. 95 and Windows NT operating systems, supplanting the Windows Program Manager. Microsoft yeah. Bob presented screens showing a house with rooms that the user could go to containing familiar objects and corresponding to the computer applications. For instance, a desk with a pen and paper and a checkbook and other items. In this case, clicking on the uh, pen and paper would open up the word processor. This didn't work. Uh, I'm surprised it didn't. We pretty much have the same dashboard today. Uh, cartoon oh, wow. dog. Look at the screenshot. Wait, wait you can see a screenshot oh, oh, of the family oh, oh, room oh, down below a, where you're looking. A cartoon dog named Rover and other cartoon characters provided guidance using speech balloons. Rover. I remember that that paper clip <laughs> piece of shit. I wanted to kill it. Yeah, Clippy. E Clippy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Clippy. Rover and a few others managed to later make their way back into Windows XP as search companions. Microsoft Bob, greatly criticized in the press, did not gain wide acceptance with users. 
and was neither a successful nor long-lived product. So there yeah. you go. Every time they tried to get cute back in the day, people hated it, like Clippy. Clippy. I didn't know anybody who liked Clippy, and we had to work really hard to make sure it wasn't in the office edition we were putting out. Yeah. Get this crap off my screen. Uh, <laughs> N- NT was the first uh, was first uh, released in uh, July of 1993. NT. 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 Yeah. Well, sounds uh, early. Well, oh, no, oh, 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 you're making oh, uh, you know, NT you know, 3.51. That's funny. That's funny. I'm mentioning. I said XP was great, which it was, but NT was pretty damn good too. If I remember, it was a 32-bit OS. Really, was it a problem. Unix? Uh, was no, it, it, Windows NT was the was the first network operating system. The problem with it was it wasn't compatible with Microsoft Active Directory. So when Windows 2000 hit. In 2000, mm. that's when Microsoft released the Active Directory component. Mm. So everybody got off of uh, uh, X, uh, Windows NT had these little small domains yeah. without an Active Directory, like a directory structure. With Windows 2000, it was their first foray into a, an LDAP directory structure. Yeah. So I had a crash it. today uh, at the store. Oh, what, happened oh, was, yeah. Uh, yeah, what happened was uh, what happened was uh, my um, uh, I'm using uh, a SQL 2005, and it's too old. And my server is six years old, and I'm migrating on Monday to the cloud, so I won't be using a server anymore. And uh, I filled up my database, and now I can't use my accounting system until they migrate me to the cloud, or I got to spend Probably, a thousand bucks. <laughs> how did you fill up your database? Is it 10 <laughs> files? Is it the 10 uh, DB? I, no, it's just uh, the data, you know, since 1996. And it's not, and my IT guy told me it's not a matter of eliminating the data. It's a matter of going to a uh, SQL uh, that's free that is got uh, a bigger, um, uh, uh, it allows for more files. If you were but, using a database from 1996, welcome, shame. by the way, to <laughs> Talk, ladies and gentlemen. 2005, yeah. but there's oh. SQL 2014. It's a free Microsoft program. Uh, the problem is, is my server's six years old. I knew I wasn't going to get another server, and if I put in the new SQL, it may crash the whole thing. So now I can't even write by a SQL, check. SQL, you mean SQL? Yeah. Uh, it's not pronounced. They call it SQL. They call it SQL. SQL? SQL? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's a database for a Microsoft database. But, uh, yeah, I know this is really tech talk that only you guys understand. <laughs> well, it's, we're certainly not getting other people calling in to join in on this sterling, uh, riveting conversation. But yeah, I, well, I, I, looked you know, up, I looked up XP and it uh, showed up uh, in 2001. Yeah. Yeah. It replaced Windows 2000 desktop. Which, which was garbage also. Uh, yeah, it, XP really hit the sweet spot, and it lasted yeah. until like 07. Yeah. yeah, and people were griping when they did away with it, too. Yes. I was. Yeah. I was. It, I liked it a lot. It was yep. robust. Uh, uh, M- the M- only problem oh, was M- it wasn't a, ME 2000, so it's about a year yeah, earlier. 2000. Yeah, uh, it, it was the replacement for Windows 2000 Professional ME they came out with. Yeah. Um, and it was really, it wasn't a business edition. It was a home version of a windows operating system they tried to come out with a cheaper home version which was scaled back from what windows professional was windows 2000 professional now i happen to like windows 10 i think it's uh, all right. i well i think as as things have gone for microsoft which has been pretty sucky over the last couple of years i think they finally got it together and they have an operating system that's fairly robust and uh, fairly glitch free you know yeah and i think you've seen the end of what's this version of windows going to look like i think they're yeah. they're going to stick with this interface they're not you're not going to see like remember every every time you get a new windows you're always wondering what it was going to look like yeah, uh, they've given up yeah, on that. Yeah. Apple link. has never done that. Well, you know, I'll tell you, I I have my Apple, and I went to Apple's because I I I I to begin with because I did video and audio and stuff like that, and they're more they're a better machine for that sort of thing, right? But uh, because of the show here, I you know, a, a girlfriend at work got this uh, Lenovo. 
which is very robust, and, and I put Windows 10 in it, and I do the show every night off of it, and quite frankly, you know, if, if tomorrow my Macs went south and I had to replace them with a machine, I might replace them with a PC, you know, because it... The, the, Blast for me. Huh? I know the it's I know it's blasphemy. The problem with the PC is that in five years it's obsolete. You can't use it anymore. Whereas you probably have that ten year old uh, Mac I have Pro one in the other room. And, yeah, and and it still works. Yeah, but it, it, they I can't get new uh, operating systems for it because no. Apple does not continue to you know, and they could make it so the operating system would sure. work, but they don't. Plant obsolescence, it's, but the machine doesn't break down. The machine right. keeps going. If something goes yeah. on it, I mean, I'll just replace the part. But the thing is that if I ever had to replace this Mac with another Mac, I'd replace it with a Mac Mini. Be well, uh, you know, I, I have the Mini here. Yeah. And, uh, uh, what I'm thinking about doing now that I'm going to the cloud, if I can get all the other junk that I need uh, to work on them, I'm going to get Mac Minis for the workstations. Yeah, I mean, and, and Mac Mini is is fine. In fact... Kind of, uh, you know, I'm not. I would not go to the new Mac Pro because, quite no. frankly, it's too expensive and more computer than I need for what I do. And like yeah. we have the network running, the the machine that runs the network is a Mac Mini, and that thing you put your hand on never gets hot. You know. Did you get an SSD or did you get uh, the drive that came with it? I just it? got the drive that came with it. It's fine. So that's sort of a hybrid something or other? Well, the thing is, you, you, you no. Know, I just It was just a regular drive, a, a, a regular hard disk that comes with it. But the thing is that it's, uh, you know, it's got uh, USB 3.0, so you put any uh, uh, external drive on there and it's fast and spiffy, you know. Yeah. Now, I have an SSD on this Lenovo. I opened it up once. And I didn't know that the only hard disk they had in there is a thousand uh, or a gigabyte. Uh, um, what do you call it? Um, SSD. SSD. That's probably why it runs so smooth. Oh, no, that's why it starts up in ten seconds. Yeah, it's a, I, I have this old uh, Toshiba uh, one twenty eight SSD, and tonight I was going to put it in the Drobo uh, because it's got some sort of accelerator slot. I opened it up and it's already got one in there. Yeah, no, but I was surprised when I opened it up and all of a sudden I found this at her office. Her her tech guy had installed an SSD. It's the startup disk, and oh, I wondered why it was so fast. I said, "Man, these Lenovo's are amazing," mm -hmm. you know. And then I found yeah, out. Yeah, uh, that's smart. I refuse to put a standard hard drive in in any machine I own anymore. They're just way too slow. They are slow. My work machine. My work machine came with a with a hard disk drive in it and I re I spent the money and replaced it because I go visit customers and it takes me forever to I'm I've got to set, fire up my laptop to either do a demo or to to do a PowerPoint presentation and it's embarrassing it takes like 10 minutes for the laptop to settle so that I can do what I need to do on it put the solid state drive in it bam well I well, I was yeah. going to I was going to um um uh you know, I, I'm I'm very happy with uh, with with most of the speeds, but I was thinking in the Mac Pro because it didn't come with it of installing 3.0 USB cards, so that I can then hook up all my 3.0 expansion drives uh, to it, and the thing will run much faster. But I can you do I'm, that? Yeah, with the Mac Mini, you can put in a, not, a no, new no, USB. The, no, no, it's Pro. Not, not the Mac Mini. The Mac oh, in the Pro. Pro. Okay. In the Pro, yeah, he has got expansion slots. Yeah, somebody's got to come up with a hack to allow a newer operating system in the in these other machines. There's there's got to be a uh, there's got to be some 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 way to well, do well, it. Well, it's you, hardware related, and the biggest issue is when they went from G3 to um, the biggest oh, the cutoff was ITEL. when. Yeah, when they went to Intel from the G3 processors, that's when nothing was backward compatible. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, well, what happened is is that uh, uh, Apple has always been, they've been assholes, okay? What happened was they went to, by the way, folks, if you want us to stop talking tech, you know, you can always call and change the and conversation. Yeah, we, we can talk Trump. I mean. Right. <laughs> and we've got a lot of people listening, but uh, not, the, not a lot of callers. So uh, give us a call. I mean, where is Scott these days, for crying out loud? I don't know. I hope he's all right. Uh, you know, did you write okay. him? He's okay. Yeah, you heard him on, 
on uh, 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 what do you call it, the intersection last night. So he's fine. Oh. Anyway, uh, the fact is that that th these are things that uh, uh, that uh, where was I? Oh, I was talking about the, oh about the Apple. What pisses yeah. me off about Apple is that when they went to an Intel system, okay, what that meant was they were going to the same system the PCs use. Right. And that you technically can run Windows programs on a PC. In fact, yeah. okay. Apple was very happy to create a program that you could go to that would allow you to run your PC programs on, a, on an Apple. And then later right. on, other people came into the fray and added stuff where you could do it and it would be like seamless. You know, you wouldn't have to change uh, uh, to another operating thing or whatever. The, but it, because it was Intel, it meant that you could use basically Windows, put Windows on your Apple. Yeah, you could put <laughs> to Windows from an conversely, Apple. conversely, logically, you could also put an Apple OS on your PC. You but, can. But they created their operating system to have a little switch in it so that you couldn't do that. Yeah, you got to hack it. You could do it. There are people I know who have done it. Who have hacked it. But what I'm saying is you hack it. It, it, it should have been that if they, if you could, it, logically, if you could run a PC program on a Mac, then you should be able to run a Mac program on a PC. But because Apple in their OS put in a little thing where it goes, uh-uh, you can't do that. And that's what I hate about Apple. Well, you think know. about this, though. They're a hardware company. They're not a software company like Microsoft. Right. So if you're going to go installing, if you're going to be going and getting Apple OS and, and putting it on a $200 PC, that, that'll destroy their business. Well, also. So I, I understand that. The only reason that Apple had an operating system and had software was because they needed it to operate their machines. You know. Uh, but it's yeah. but in many cases it's so much better than uh, than the Microsoft, which uh, you know the interface is so much well, better. Well, I I gotta so tell I, you now that after I've been running a PC, this Windows 10, yeah. uh, I could live with Windows 10. Okay, I could. Uh, I I don't think there the, the there is a difference obviously, but it's not qualitative anymore. You know, it's not as it's not as stark, right? Yeah, it's not as stark. I, I will tell you this, though. I switched. I didn't say I shouldn't say switched, but I broke my iPhone. I have two iPhones. I have one for work and I have my personal one. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, I dropped my work one and I, and I shattered the screen. And it was an iPhone 5C that was slower than slow. And I've been thinking about getting rid of it. And I wasn't going to go and repair that screen. Yeah. So instead, the iPhone I, you know, C. What do you mean C? I don't. Remember the C was the colored ones. They had the yellow one. Mine was a yellow oh, one. I see. They yeah. had the yellow, the uh, red, yeah, they had yeah. the okay. blue. Okay. And there was so it was an iPhone 5C. Oh, I see. Okay, right. That's All right. right. I didn't say the five. It was an iPhone 5C, and it was slow and it was really starting to annoy me. And I was thinking about replacing it, and I thought, I'm going to try Android. I hadn't had an Android phone since 2011, and so I got a, a Galaxy S7. Mm -hmm. I bought it on eBay, and catch on fire. No, I this isn't that the, the seven was the one up? that caught on fire. Yeah, or maybe is it really? Yeah, no, it wasn't the S seven. It, it wasn't was, the no, it wasn't the Galaxy S seven. It was uh, something else. Maybe the maybe remember. it was the Galaxy Seven Note or something like that. Maybe, yeah. maybe. Um, but in any re regard, I I can't get used to this damn phone. I still don't know how to use it. I've taken tutorials. I spent hours on the internet watching how tos, and I just can't get comfortable with this damn phone. And I got it because I do a lot of driving, mm -hmm. and I love Waze. Waze is the the GPS that um, is owned by Google, which owns Android, right? Mm -hmm. And because of that, I wanted to get the GPS screen from Waze on my Apple CarPlay. Right. So I have a Ford. My company car is a Ford uh, Escape with a Sync Three navig the Sync Three in it, yeah, you know, yeah. and it runs Apple CarPlay in the in the screen in the center, right? Yeah. And so they only let you run Microsoft Maps. I'm sorry. What am I saying? Microsoft Maps. They only let you run the uh, uh, Apple Maps program there. 
right? So I was like, well, Google is really close to making Waze available, but app, but, but Android Auto sucks. Every 15 minutes, the thing reboots itself. I'm driving. I was on the road for three hours yesterday on my way someplace. Every 15 minutes, all of a sudden, the screen goes black. I have to disconnect the phone, reconnect the phone, like clockwork. Every 15 minutes, Android sucks. You mean it the, sucks. The, the phone, Apple what, it, Is it the phone itself, though, that's the problem? I, damned if I know. All I know, the phone itself works okay, right? But when I plug it in, you know, I use the USB connector. Yeah. It, yeah, and so I, on my screen, Android... Android, what they call Android Auto, pops up, and I've got the map. So it, you know, it talks into the car. I can hear the the, the directions. They're on the screen, and then all of a sudden, bam! It goes black, and then up comes the regular uh, Ford Sync uh, screen. So then I got to unplug it, plug it in, go back to the map, and have it catch up and do all that. This happened. Now, who who, ma who makes Sync? Uh, Ford does. Ford does. It's in coordination with uh, Apple, isn't it? Well, no, because remember, yeah, that part of it is because they run Apple CarPlay. Yeah. They run both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is the Android version of CarPlay. Uh, and the hmm. and I can tell you straight up, just and I, I this is going to sound prejudiced because I've been an Apple guy for so long, but Apple CarPlay is so much nicer. I can on the screen, I can slide, I can see all my apps on the screen instead of on my phone. If I if they would allow Waze on the thing, I, it would be the best thing in the world. But they don't. I have Waze on my iPhone. Yeah, me too. And and so if you had it on the iPhone and you plugged it into the USB, why wouldn't it uh, do the same thing and work on the? Uh, because they block it, because oh. they Apple won't let it happen. Oh, I see. They uh, want you to use their maps. The it's the Samsung yeah, Note right. I don't Seven. Know. I don't know why Apple over the years hasn't had some large class action suits about this kind of shit because well, they have got the they, have, they do this though Alex. But no but wait a minute they've gotten away with murder for years doing this we 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 number on oh we're such a small little company we can't blah 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 you know they have taken done things which if if microsoft had done it the, the government would be yelling that you know uh no this, the reason is is that Microsoft is used uh, uh, as a program on many different people's computers, whereas the Apple is only on the Apple computer. And you yeah, know, but, but they but they right? but they use that as an excuse, and then they use that as a, the same excuse when they went to the iPhone, which was a very popular product. It wasn't like nobody, you know, only a few people had an iPhone, so they could do anything they wanted to. But, you know, what they did is they've always created, Apple has always created a system where you are stuck with them, you know. Well, but that's, see, that's, that's the business. That's the nature of technology. I read something that really pissed me off today about this whole thing. Yeah. So I'm looking for answers on why Android Auto isn't working right for me. And what I find is an article that talks about how Ford and these other car companies are going to now start not playing nice with Android and Apple, because they want to develop their own app store. But what I'm so, what I'm saying is, again, and that's really what it's all where, about. Where where is the government at this point? Where is the government well, jumping? Right and hold on a second. Let me, let me finish what I'm saying, Phil. Where is the right. government in saying, "Hey, you know, this is a marketplace in which all these things should be compatible with each other." You know that 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 for the good of the public. These things should be able to talk to each other. And they don't talk to each other. Did, did, you know? Now, the government and high tech got together the other day. You had the CEO of, um, of Microsoft, uh, uh, Tim Cook from Apple. You had this guy uh, from Akamel or something. It's a downloading. Uh, Akamai. Uh, Akamai. Uh, uh, the CEO of IBM. Uh, they all met with Trump. Uh, and they were all giving the, uh, Trump accolades because what Trump is trying to do is bring government into the 21st century with uh, uh, better, uh, better. Uh, I didn't hear anybody giving him accolades. Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, who they was? were all happy to be there, and yeah, they're saying they're, the government is still using like those big seven-inch and ten-inch floppy disks. Oh, really? In some of their systems. Yeah. Yeah. And by the and way, hello to Chiron. Patrick. Remember Chirons back in the day? They had those big 10-inch floppy disks oh, yeah. on the Chiron yeah. 4? Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, um, good luck with that one, Donald. Uh, it, it, they're all looking forward to working with. Uh, of course, with, you know with, why. And, you know, and, you know, you know why. Yeah, of course, money. But yeah. it's it's a positive thing, and you know the uh, it was Kushner that put it all together. Uh, oh gee, and, and oh God! Guys. Then let's all say thank God for Kushner. Well, hey, it, he's part of the administration, and it's uh, and it's a positive thing. We should uh, laud it, you know, as yeah. uh, something good. Yeah, uh, we need well, a couple of other people to call so that I'm not cutting into Kevin's face well, with we my got, picture. Because uh, in fact, <laughs> let, let me let me let me make myself a little smaller here. There we go. See, there I am. I'm smaller now. Uh, uh, you, you know, I uh, uh, well, so he had a meeting with these people. Big fucking. I'm you know, I'm not buying. I, I'm, not, I'm not buying. A, I'm not buying another Apple product because Tim Cook showed up. The bottom yeah. line on all of this stuff is, is who's going to make the money, right? Everybody wants the money. Apple owns that iTunes store. Google owns their Google Play store. Yeah. The, now the car companies want to own their own store. Microsoft now with Windows 10 has their own store. So the problem – that's why things aren't compatible because who's – who? what do they all share the wealth? Do they share, you know, do they have a revenue stream that everybody shares iTunes, Google Play? They, they That's the only way it's ever going to be compatible. Otherwise, it's communism. But that's, well, then that's why nothing is compatible. Because they all want you to use their apps. That's why, that's why Waze won't, uh, isn't, isn't going to be working on uh, Google, I mean, Apple CarPlay anytime soon. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, but, I, I just think that. Somewhere along the line, there should be some standard set saying that there has to be an interoperability between different systems and so on, so that people don't say, you know, like, for instance, I'm, and I have to say this, I am locked in to the Apple ecosystem. Uh, yeah. I have a, an iPhone. I have an iPad. I have Apple computers on my desk here. <coughs> have an uh, Apple Watch. All of them talk to each other. And if, if something happens on one, it happens on all the others. All right? That's all wonderful. Okay? Up to a point. Because if tomorrow I say, I'm sick and tired of it, why shouldn't I get myself an Android phone? You know, they look okay. They're fine. I can't get my Apple stuff, like my messaging service and things like that, to talk to my Android. That's the right. problem. And, and, and I think the government has to jump in and say, hey, wait a minute, there's got to be an interoperability between these different systems so that Alex can go, if he wants to, with freedom of being able to buy another product and use an Android and be able to get his Apple message, message service. Uh, you're a it. socialist. You know, uh, I'm not a socialist. I'm, a socialist. Just, I'm just saying that I don't think business has the right to screw me like this. Well, they, they, you know, you pick the operating system and, and the ecosystem that you like, and and uh, and they're better than the other one. So, if uh, to you, and if you like that one, that's what you pick. Just because you have it, doesn't Phil. mean you should use it with other yes. stuff. Uh, Patrick, I agree with pa you, Phil. Pa Patrick, yeah. <laughs> for a change. Patrick, oh Patrick. Give me a full moon today. You can't take What? Uh, you're low. Your no, audio. No, no. Hey, if you be quiet, Phil, it would get louder. Okay. <laughs> yes, Patrick. You can't take Ford parts and put them in a Chevrolet. You can't take Toyota and put them in a Ford. I mean, they're different. They're different items. And though you might want compatibility between them all. Okay, then, but but wait a minute, wait a minute, Patrick. If I have a Ford car. And I want to put in a carburetor, a new carburetor in there. I don't have to stick with Ford carburetors. Yeah. There's, there's third party. It has to be compatible. It has to be compatible, but, but it can be but, made by a third party. But the point is, you can't take a Chevrolet part and put it in. Yeah. So oh, yeah. it's uh, the uh, same with... Right. Who's making all the noise? Because it's. I it's, think that's Brian. Brian's making a ton of noise. Yeah, it, 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 by doing that, you're 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 bringing yeah. uh, Patrick down a bit. Yeah. yeah. 
When you get a chance, Patrick, also go over to your um, your Skype Sorry. and your audio settings and make sure that it take it off automatic. Because what it what it's doing is when it hears a sound coming from somebody else, it's dampening you. So you might check that. You don't have to do it now, but. Um, but you know, you, I know you want compatibility between everything, but that that's competition. Yeah. I mean, that's the free market, and you know. Uh, yeah, but in that like, free market, Patrick, in that free market is you and me, you know. And 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 we need to have uh, be protected against people trying to lock us into their ecosystem, that we somehow have a little bit of wiggle room to do something else if we want to, and not have to pay a terrible price for it. I would love to maybe get an Android phone, but then I won't get my messages anymore. You know, I have to be getting Android messages, and if somebody's sending well, something from a from a, you know, I, that's like a decision I made when I went Apple too, because I I, I knew that was going to happen, and I said, okay, do I want to go Microsoft side or do I want to go Apple side? I know I'm not going to get both. Yeah, and, yeah. Microsoft and, had a, had a phone uh, with an operating system, yeah, and uh, it, but it wasn't any good. Well, and the thing is that you know I've got a Ford truck, and if I want to use the text feature or something in my truck, yeah. I can't because it's a Microsoft. Uh, uh, what the hell do they, they call it? They yeah, call you it don't. The, they'll support which? Wh what year is your car? Your it's truck. a 2012. Oh, okay, so it's older. I have. I had a 2012 Mustang. The the new app, the Sync Three in Ford, is pretty cool. When I get a text message on my Apple phone, I'll be doing. I'll be driving along, and all of a sudden, it'll say. You have a text message. Would you like me to read it to you? And it waits. I don't have to press a button. Nothing. It says, That's... and I'll just say yes. And then it'll say, you have a text message from your wife. And then it read. Would you like me to read the message? Yes. Would you like to reply to the message? Yes. What would you like to say? And I reply. Would you like me to send it? Send it. And it. So it you sends. can. Can you upgrade to that, or is it? No, not from a 2012. Okay, because that, that's exactly what I wanted to use. That's the oh, feature I want awesome. to use. Now, the only areas awesome. where you can then do messaging and stuff is to use third-party messaging services. I can right, still but they're not going to play. They're, they're not going to play with the cars. See that they, they don't play with yeah. Apple with uh, any of the apps on the Sync system. Yes, exactly. So how does, that, how, how does that? I can ask Siri uh, to do something, uh, but it comes through the phone. But it's not as automatic as it should be. How does that right. serve us any good? You know, I mean, you and me. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, well, but here we are. Here, here, mouse trap. here we are griping remember, about it. Remember, you know? Alex, this is about this is about free market, right? So if you want those features, you've got to buy an Apple, yep. right? If you buy an Android and plug in Android Auto. I'm telling you because I have both and I plug them both in and I drive with both. Yeah. It sucks. Well, the the Android more... Auto sucks. It it is like three years behind. Yeah. Apple. Tony has uh, or something. This may be a bad analogy, but I can maybe try to use it. This is why I like the Skype program you use because right now it's a native program, but I'm using it on a you can use it on a Windows and an Apple and be grouped in together. So. Maybe it's actually the uh, well. The uh, that's that's what I'm talking about. Is the third, True, yeah. third party things will work on all these systems. I mean, in their own particular fashion. I I I know that, for instance, I use Windows here right yeah. now because um, uh, I don't want to. I'm using the original, the uh, uh, the original Skype, not the Windows 10 Skype, which then uses a browser, which I then couldn't show people talking. I would have right. to then go over to my Mac, where, by the way, Skype for the Mac is different than Skype for, for Windows. And I'm sure for those people who call me up and go, well, I'm watching this on my iPhone and I can't see everybody. They're on Skype and they can't see everybody. It's because certain people on, a, on an iPhone are cut out. But maybe it's on, a, on an record. Android, they're all there. You know, I mean, it... It, 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 the companies themselves who are third parties have to make compromises in each case. Yeah, that's a good point, yeah. 
Yeah, well, so, you know, if, if you're on a group call with uh, with seven or eight or nine people, and you're on an iPhone, there's only so much landscape that you can well, uh, I, take I, advantage. I agree with you on that, but I'm still saying that you know people were going, "Gee, I can't see Phil." Well, where's Phil? Phil isn't on my on my phone. Well, that's because you only have so much space, and Skype is going to say, "Hey, I'm, we're allocating this space." Mm -hmm. You know. It wasn't until tonight that I've got the configuration set up so that now everybody's picture is kind of even. Yeah. Uh, uh, I had to do a little, little jiggering of that, you know, for the windows. But if I went over and suddenly started doing the show tomorrow night on the Mac, I'd have to completely reset stuff up and everything, you know. All I'm saying is, is that, that I would just like to be able to go between several different brands and get pretty much the same stuff. I'd like to, if somebody sends me, like, you know, uh, you send me an e a mail uh, by my uh, Apple iMessage, that it can be received on my Android phone. One of the reasons that the Skype uh, works on both platforms is that it was originally a third-party independent company that no, worked it, and, on and both would, platforms. And to this day, it would. I mean, there are a lot of other products that do, too. When you talk about uh, Facebook Messenger, uh, it works on all platforms. Facebook's on every platform. Facebook Netflix. is an operating Netflix system. Netflix is on every platform. I mean, everything yeah. except those things which are, uh, uh, are proprietary, are proprietary uh, are yeah. fine. But the things that are proprietary are a lot of the things you use for communication every day, like iMessage, as an example. Right. And I don't know what the Android equivalent of that is, but, uh, you know, you couldn't phone me using the Android uh, message uh, system. I, I, I know what it is. To my phone. Uh, ju jungle drum beats. No, I could, I could actually <laughs> message you from, okay. the message. I, could, I could send you a text message and you would get it on your iMessage. Yeah. I would. Yeah, that's how. That's how. Yeah, yeah sure. I have a lot of people. I got friends with Androids that text me all the time. Yeah, uh, sure. Okay. You could text them. You notice the colors are different sometimes. Sometimes yeah, it's one's green. blue and one's green. Yeah. Right. It tell if it's coming from iMessage, it's either always green. I think it's always green. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If it's coming from an Android or a non uh, Apple device, it's blue. Yeah. Yeah. A friend of mine wanted to text me on the Apple and made me turn on the iMessage on the Apple because I didn't have it on. Yeah. Wow. And so the color of my thing showed up differently. And then when I turned it on, he says that it's different and you can do other stuff. I didn't notice any yeah. difference but the color. Well, you, could, the you could do a ton of things when you turn on iMessage. Oh. Well, I haven't seen that yet. Yeah, because yeah, it converts it to a some kind of a text message or something if it's off. And then, oh, then you've right, got you've got right. Facebook right. Messenger, right. which is is you know pretty much as good. Except, yeah, I like Facebook except Messenger. people are allowed to be so, a little more annoying with it. Than, yeah, Tony. I come back though. I've been to you If I saw one more picture of Scooby Doo, I was gonna throw up. I don't blame you. I was gonna name my dog that actually. You were good. Good. If I had a boy though, yeah. yeah. I thought you were, I heard you were going to name it Alex. Uh, Actually, all joking aside, I told Renee this. If I did have a, I would have, I was thinking about a boy. Bolo isn't a bad nickname, but I don't know if I would do it. Yeah. That was your, uh, remember you said you well, had Why don't you use the original uh, Slavic name, which is Boloslav? Call him Boloslav. Call your, hey, Boloslav, hey, Boloslav. What? Uh, I would have, if I had a boy lab, I would do Scooby. Well, if you get a bitch, uh, you could. Call it out. Well, I think I may adopt a girl. I think I'm on the list. I already have a name picked out. So. Anyway, so uh, you know, uh, but uh, uh, all I'm saying is, is that um, um, uh, you know, we don't have to drag this discussion on that much longer. It's just that that uh, I I just think that we live in a technological age in which we rely on these devices. And we should have the full benefit of, of interoperability on communications and things like that. If there are certain programs that just want to make themselves for one phone or another or whatever, that's, that's something altogether. But I'm talking about things like, you know, like messaging, I, you know, IMing and things like that. But, you know. you know, if you have an iPhone, I can call an Android phone. That's, yeah. you know, uh, and, and that, text. that you should have, or text, yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, it, it does, but these other features are proprietary. Yeah. They develop them, and they want you to buy their stuff, and that's why they provide it. No, they force it down your throat is what they do. Yes, Brian. 
I was wondering, and I've been wondering this for quite some time. It's odd you bring this up in the discussion. But uh, as far as hardware, and more specifically peripherals that attach to hardware, mm -hmm. like your USB cables, your USB micros, your USB minis, and now your USB Cs in competition with uh, USB Lightnings, from, which is proprietary to Apple. Why does that have to happen? Why can't it all be USB-C, especially if, you know, we're on this eco-friendly save the earth uh, trip and, uh, you know, by making it the plugs universal, among other things that I'm not covering and can't cover in the span of this uh, segment, um, have that happen? Well, they, well I they, think they, the, the best good. reason for that is you. how would you legislate to a company that they can't innovate and, and you know, come up with their own... You know, that's that's you talk about socialism that that you, you're telling a company now that they can't develop a Thunderbolt port or they can't develop, you know, the Microsoft. I like them. I, I like the well, they can uh, develop well let me let Apple, first of all, first of all, Apple, first, I like the the yeah. connector for the Apple way better because I don't have while I'm driving. If I want to plug it in, I don't have to look and see which way I got to turn well, it. I like mean, they, do, well, with no, USB you do with the USB-C. No, but, but, the, the USB but they, they changed that. Uh, a while back, and it was a welcome change, okay? Because the other one was clunky, and the, uh, the pins broke off. The, well, the pins break off now too. Yeah, yeah uh, still, uh, no, really, it's still shitty. Yeah, they, but the but the point no is pins. that it's you're right, uh, Brian. They shouldn't be using this proprietary one they're using now. They should be using USB C, which is what the rest of the industry is starting to use, which is even smaller than the one they've got. Right. And you can put in either way. It doesn't matter which way you put in the USB C. So I mean, but you talk about I, tangles, I, tangles, and I know. But listen, clutter. But you want to know where Apple constantly has fucked up over the years? They can't decide what kind of input they want for video. I mean, first they had. Do you remember uh, they came out with the uh, what was it? Uh, what was the first one they came out with? The uh, Fire, Firewire, or something? Firewire, Firewire, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then I, uh, after I got all firewired up here for my video, they <laughs> suddenly decided they were going to go to another thing, which was um, Thunderbolt. Th Thunderbolt. Uh, right? I think there was something before Thunderbolt that they went to. Uh, well, there was Firewire 400, Firewire 800. Yeah, I had the 800. Th that, they never, ever, nobody ever did anything with the 800. Did they ever release a thunder cunt of the uh, cock juggling variety? <laughs> uh, ah, <laughs> there go, there goes, there, there goes that. Brian. He's he's going at it again. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of truckers are, know that. Right? Yeah, but, <laughs> uh, but all I'm saying is, is to this uh, day, I, I to this day, they don't know what they want to do. Now they've got Thunderbolt. Whoop the fucking like do! Now oh, Thunderbolt oh, too. Yeah, yeah, Thunderbolt's or great that, unless you want a I, Thunderbolt monitor. And then it costs way more than another kind of monitor. Okay. Well, my Drobo has got Thunderbolt, and it's also got USB 3. What's your Drobo? Uh -huh. What the fuck is a Drobo? He's got everything now. I'm telling you, you guys, everything. What the fuck is a Drobo? You can sell him anything, Alex. What is Here's that? The, I see him coming. Oh, that, the oh, that, it's that, a NAS device. That's oh, a really oh, nice. oh, 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 ain't that some shit, said the toilet paper to the asshole. But yeah, the other is the... Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. uh, as Yoda would say, this is a running joke. I'd buy one of those, and I would put, I, I would put a roll for toilet paper on the side of it, just you yeah. know. Anyway, well, that was the box that it came no, in. No, but what I'm saying as Yoda is, would say, what, Apple, what I'm saying is, as far as Apple concerned, Thunderbolt proprietary cocksuckers they are. You know, my uh, the my Mac Mini came with Thunderbolt, and I had to go get an adapter to make it work with anything else. You know, so it's the, so it's it's not really taking advantage of the Thunderbolt. Nope. The one I have is a DAS or direct uh, direct uh, storage system, I think. Uh, so it, it's not a NAS, even though I have drives. Are we going to have to talk about this <laughs> again tonight? We're going to have to talk about this again tonight. God, people are dropping like flies. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if we didn't kill them off in the first half hour, uh, you know, or that uh, after, you know, after. Uh, Brown. Yeah, you, uh, you, you, you're not going to have the ability to have like 40 terabytes of space for your one terabyte of photographs you've taken all your life. Yeah. Uh, no, well, uh, I got more than that. But it, I, the only reason. Believe me, I, you could fit them all on an eight, eight without thinking twice about it. 
Well, the reason I bought that was I figured that, you know, I used to have a 12 uh, megapixel camera. Then I went to a 16. Yes, does it have network? And now does it have network capability? Can you play them on uh, TV sets all over your house? No. Well, that's not good. You should have gotten. You should have got. You should have got. like a hard drive. You should have gotten yourself an array with a network that was also a network yeah, drive. That's, it, that's network. That's network accessible. No, it's uh, network accessible one. from a machine. Oh, you can okay. go to that. But this thing uh, doesn't like. But this is is a massive amount of storage with backup capabilities that rebuilds yeah, itself. Of drive yeah, files. yeah, that you're never going to use. Uh, you know, it just depends on uh, that you're you never know, going to use. 36 and 50 megapixels now. I mean, you got a 50 megapixel I, file. I, that I, thing even, is enormous. Even at that, I'm telling you, I mean, I store a video and I've got it on. Uh, got all Wait till you start going to 8K, my friend. I'm, I'm not uh, going to 8K. Well, if you do, you need storage like I mean, this. But I use four, do 4K and I still got more than enough storage space for that. Yeah, how much storage do you have? You, you probably have cataracts. Better. What's for? Well, between K everything, I mean, it, 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 which storage are you talking about? My network drives in which I can watch my TV shows on any set yeah, in the house? You have a serious amount of storage. I, I, uh, I remember you talking about I it. Have, uh, have oh, okay. I have, let's see, I have two fives and I have two fours. Okay. And then I've got a bunch of externals. And here I thought 1080p was fine. But what I so let me know when they develop matrix style porn. Then you'll have me on board. Matrix yeah, style. Porn. All five senses are stimulated all at once. Don't well, they have that? They have VR. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot yeah. of VR what porn you, out there. You know, yeah, there's you nothing, there's nothing too, like having VR porn and being able to put on a pair, putting on a pair of glasses, and then being able to watch two other people that aren't you fucking. You know, I mean, it's and feel like you're there. <laughs> if I want, That's if I want, well, well, when they can stimulate my sense of touch. You'll have me on board. You know what I wondered? Here's what I wanted to invent. I figured I can't. I don't know why nobody ever invented this. Is a suit you can put on, like a jumpsuit, right? Close to the body with all kinds of sensors on it, right? And then you put on the goggles, and there's some woman. She starts fucking you and 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 sucking, and your dick feels it because you're in this suit. You can feel her hands caressing your body. Right? And then you got to have the suit dry cleaned. <laughs> and you know what, Alex? Fast forward 50 years and you have a significant reduction of human population. What? Uh, uh, reduction of population? But I yeah, wonder but why somebody, somebody hasn't even begun to invent all these ones. No, no, but I, I was... There's too many fucking people in the world. I was wondering why somebody hasn't thought about inventing something like that. You could certainly do that, a tactile suit that, you know... Yeah, I'm sure you could. And then the pizza delivery guy shows up. <laughs> <laughs> he can't get out of it quick enough. <laughs> <laughs> or he just opened the door. Yourself, well, no, I mean, it, it, would, look, it, would, it would kind of look a little bit like a space suit is what it would look like. It's just form-fitting. And, you you know, yeah, you could answer the door while your virtual hey, your virtual woman you is sucking your dick. Because, you know, you hey, know, here's for the p -p -p pizza. You know. have, you guys, have you guys heard of the real doll? <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, they're making them what in Japan? They, 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 they're like uh, the anatomy of it is as well as the feel they of weigh, it. Yeah, they weigh as much as a like a person, yeah. and they're feel to the touch. And now they've been around about ten, twelve years. But it's like you, you got to be like into necrophilia because you're carrying around this dead weight that you're having sex with. But now they're making it sounds with like, like artificial intelligence. Hey, hey, it sounds like my ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> Dead weight. <laughs> the new real Peggy doll. Bundy, like... 2 yeah. <laughs> yeah, she was pretty hot in that show. Oh yeah, but she was lazy as fuck. Uh, yeah, uh, but I mean, I uh, 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 well, I you know, I I don't understand the the VR is getting very popular. There's a lot of VR porn out there you can download. This is why I've also said that if uh, the Matrix were to come to fruition and the matrix were nothing but you know a pornographic playground for everyone involved yeah. those fucking those fucking uh, ai sentient beings would rule us all for eternity yeah there would yeah. be no resistance 
Well, Orpheus would be told why, why, by all of us to go fuck himself. Why would you want to resist a, 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 a super alien I'll species that wants to? Thank you very no, much. If a it super, means getting my why, dick sucked. Why, yeah, why, yeah, why would you want to uh, fight a, an alien existence that wants to blow you? You know, you're theirs. That's it, you know. But no, they just recreate 1999 as it existed. They deserve to have their system I mean, there's over. even the possibility, and I have to say this very honestly, that if Melania Trump were willing to come over to my house and blow me, I might have voted for Donald Trump. Yeah. That seemed to stun everybody. <laughs> Oh, I think yeah, well, when you hike your skirt, we're all up, contemplating you might find that. We're all contemplating that. That's life. that's the way you can win over all the Democrats. Send her door to door, blowing all the Democrats. Yeah, I'm a well, I'm a registered Democrat. You are, but I, I suck dick. Oh. She won't even. Well, yeah, she won't even hold it. Uh, hold your hand. Uh, you know. Well, wait a minute. Uh, who's, who's in that administration that's gay? Are there any? I don't think so. Uh, I'm not sure. If they are, if there are any, they're not. They're not going to come forward. Yeah. Look at Ferd. Kushner couldn't be. Kushner couldn't be gay. Kushner couldn't be gay because he never opens his mouth. You know, Who's that? So, uh, <laughs> uh, Ivanka Trump's uh, husband. What? Uh, yeah. Oh. Jared Kushner. Yeah, Jared yeah. Kushner. He could be. What do you think about all this, Patrick? You've been quiet. What specifically? Anything. Yeah. Anything. The set down what? Yeah. He's jerking off the Megan Megan Kelly right now. So don't bug him. <laughs> Is Megan as sexy oh. now that she's over at NBC? She's That's even sexier. Question. You know the problem I have is there's no uh, lucite table, and I can't see her leg while she's yapping. Plus, she's cavorting with the enemy. Yeah, but, Fox was good about those faraway shots. Huh? By the way, anybody see that interview with what's his name? I didn't see it. That's nobody did. The ratings about. tanked. What the Alex Jones one? Did you guys the talk ratings, about that already? Yeah, no, we didn't. We haven't the radio talked. Guy, we haven't mouth, talked somebody. about it yet. Did you see it, Kevin? Yeah, I saw it. Well, tell me, tell me about it. It was basically full of shit. Dodged any kind of question that she went after him on. Uh... Was she any good? Was she any good? Was she any good at interviewing him? I I don't think so. She you know kind of pushed, pushed things a little bit, but nothing. She's nothing not exciting. very good at interviewing. She's really quite no, terrible. I, I, I was pretty disappointed. In it. I thought it'd be a little better than it was. It yeah, was a lot to see a train wreck. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of hype. Uh, you know, uh, her smiling with uh, Al, what, what was his name? Al, Alex, Alex Jones. Jones. Alex no. Jones. Yeah. Alex Jones. Yeah, and, 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 you know they 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 called him out on a couple of things that he said and how he had to backtrack on them and that sort of thing. But you mean like the shooting in Connecticut and stuff yeah, like that? Yeah, he's just full of shit, and you know basically they were just pounding in that message that this guy's full of shit. I yes, think. Patrick's got he's his hand. Going to get a show on NBC. Patrick. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the thing that shocked me with Jim is he's only one year older than me. And I swear he's at least twenty years older than me. Yeah. I mean that guy got the miles on him. And he's, I don't know if it's all the conspiracy theory oh, that I'm, just he waiting does. him. He looks old. He looks like he's at ready to have a heart attack. Yeah, and I mean he's, he's forty three. And you're right, that's exactly it, Kevin. Is he looked like a heart attack waiting he's sweating constantly. Yeah. yeah. And he's overweight. He shows himself like he's muscular, mm -hmm. but he's sweating. For f uh, did you see him with his shirt off? Yeah, yeah. Why would he have his shirt Wait, off? Wait, but why did he have his shirt off? Oh, it was just filling. He was, I think it was part of the supplement from InfoWars that they sell. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's what it was. If I had Phil or Rob <laughs> have a soundboard <laughs> with oh, squealing, God. that would be the time to... The guy's crazy. But he, um... I mean, wait, he wait, wait. <laughs> Jeez almighty. So, I mean, so the interview wasn't, I didn't miss anything by not watching it. Uh, no, fact, they, they cut one part uh, Did you watch the fourth Putin one yet? No, I haven't watched the fourth Putin one yet. I've got to get to it. Oh. Was it good? Uh, I, I haven't watched it yet either. You know. I did watch that uh, 
betting uh, counting betting on zero that herbal life one that oh, you yes, saw last yes week? do you watch what it what do you think oh well, you know that that got me because that fucking ackman i don't know how to trust him or not i i between him and what the hell is the other guy's uh ibach or whatever the hell the other guy's name is they well, both of those guys are just Fucking it, with the stock market I, I, like no tomorrow. I watched the, the it's a d- documentary on Herbal Life, and it it's not a great documentary in that they spend too much time on these people, you know, and stuff. So I kind of sped yeah. through certain parts of it to get the factual parts of it. But you watch it, and you are amazed by the fact that these people are even allowed to operate. Exactly. I mean, and it you know, is it is, guy... it, it is the classic. A, a, a example of a pyramid scheme, yeah. And the and reason why we make the most of, the worries me the most about that whole thing was when I saw that Ackman was involved in it. Yeah, Ackman was in, involved in the company that I was laid off two years ago from. He, now and he he's used to background in, involved in the company that didn't I was he used laid to work off. for Disney or something? No, no, uh, it's uh, it's a big chemical company but he was no but i the uh, present uh, the present was, ceo and ackman were in bed together the present ceo was with disney at one point yeah yeah and then well, went over to this I'm, thing but yeah, it, 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 is, company, it yeah. is it is the ponzi scheme from hell it's it's and it's a it's it a, it's, out, it's a it's a it's a pyramid scheme in which people at the bottom are going to lose money and the people at the top are going to make money. And it's structured that way. And the whole reason you go into selling Herbal Life is to sell Herbal Life to people who are going to sell Herbal Life. And that's right. how and you, you make, make money, money off them. But the, the, the thing that you sit back after looking at that whole thing and see how many other companies that are in existence today operating just like that. Well, he and the FTC in, in, in doesn't this, give a shit. Well, no. Here's what happened: the FTC went and they charged Herbal Life, and well, they yeah, settled. They yeah. settled with Herbal Life for something like two hundred million dollars, and then the FTC goes, "Okay, they paid their two hundred million dollars. They can go back to being the the pyramid scheme, which equated to about ten cents per person in the class action suit." Yeah, I mean, it was just terrible. Just terrible. It it's was, terrible. It's allowed to go on. And there were, there were a couple of other people they mentioned that do kind of the same thing, but because they do it in a slightly different fashion, they're not as culpable. But legally. there are a lot of them around. There are a lot of them around. Uh, what, was, what was the other one? Oh, God. Amway. Uh, well, uh, Amway, Amway. I don't know, though, if Amway... You know, it depends on whether the way in which you make money is by selling to people below you to be distributors well they all do that that's how it has to work even even uh, that makeup one no, mary no, Kay mary, mary is, Kay basically woman decides she wants to sell mary k cosmetics she buys she, the shit and no she, she takes buys the stuff and goes out and sells it but there's not somebody who is making money off the fact that she, i think there is the, uh, you no, can go co- higher and higher no. in this mary k that's uh because i i knew i had a customer that had one of those pink cadillacs and uh, yeah, uh yeah. You know, the deal is they got a lot of people under them selling it too there's some reason uh, why mary k isn't isn't a pyramid scheme uh i i can't figure out why well yeah, i can't I figure should. out why either because i'm not very good at this Okay. Well, is I, it true you I, can't buy Mary Kay products outside of Mary Kay distributors? That's right. Yes, it's true. Correct. That may be a reason why there, Alex. They're it may not be the primary the reason. But see, Herbal not- Life was doing the same thing. They were having people. They were setting up storefronts. Yeah, they were setting up. They were and, setting up. Come in. And they were blank storefronts. They couldn't advertise that it was Herbal Life. It was just a blank front of the store, and you had to go in there. And then they would sell you say, shakes to drink and stuff shake. like that. Yeah. Yeah. So I love the guy who said he started about 10 of these stores and yeah. he got caught in the middle of this whole, you know, scheme and was losing his shirt like crazy. So he turned them all into vaping parlors. Yeah, exactly. And is making a fortune <laughs> now. Yeah, exactly. Good way to save face. Yeah. Well, you know, these multi multi level. He was a business major or something. Yeah. These multi level marketing uh, things have been uh, popular for a long time, and they've got it for uh, people that sell security stuff, and uh, you know where you have little alarms, personal alarms, things like that. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's so that people that don't want a job 
uh, can have a business card. Yeah, but and, here, here's, uh, what, here's what happens. Here's what happens, though. Where it becomes a, a pyramid scheme and becomes highly illegal is when you've got the people at the bottom of this pyramid losing their shirts. Well, okay. they buy a whole bunch of shit they can't sell. And the people on the top are making money. Right. Yeah, yes, Pat. Because you bought all the shit they can't sell. It, it, the people garage. on all levels should have an equal opportunity to make money because they're selling product to their friends. Socialist. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not being a socialist. I yeah, just... It's exactly what it is. Okay, well, I don't like predatory capitalism, okay? I think people make a profit. <laughs> yes, Patrick. That's why Trump's there, huh? Yeah. I went yeah. to a... Uh... A meeting for one, I forget which one it was, uh, a friend of mine needed me to go and needed me to take somebody with me. So I took my stepdad. Mm -hmm. And this was probably 20 years ago. Yep. And we went to a, uh, it was an office building. Yeah. And we went in and it was like a fucking cult. Yep. I yeah. Mean, yeah. Like the exactly. first like... I got. Now, my stepdad was very open-minded to it, and I was already closed. I mean, I walked in there, mm -hmm. and they gave you your name tag and all of this shit, and it just had this vibe that was really weird. So we went into a room, and it was uh, like a slideshow or video or something like that, where it showed you how it worked. And when it ended... Um, my stepdad leans over to me and he said, well, what do you think? I mean, it sounds pretty good. And I said, it's, it's a fucking scheme. You know, they're, they're, you have to invest something like $5,000. Yeah. And you get that back right away because you're going to make all of these sales immediately, which might be true. But then... Just like everything else, you got to keep going back to these same people that already have purchased enough shit for a year. They don't want to buy anymore. And the friend of mine that asked me to do this because his wife needed more people involved in it to then she could move up the ladder. Well, she ended up losing almost everything that they owned because yeah. she was get so far from it and never got paid for any of the sales that she made or like with me and my stepdad yeah let's say for a value of a hundred dollars each if we showed up she never got any of that money and all the investing and so i saw this shit firsthand and the only thing i thought of is it's a cult it really is a cult a well, friend I of mine back well when i can i can television yeah wait a friend of mine when i worked in the 90s uh one day, he was a Chiron operator. I was a director. He comes over to me. He says, what are you doing tonight? I said, nothing. I was single at the time. He says, come to a meeting with me. I'm like, yeah. what's it about? Asked. No, it was Transamerica. Which and one? it's a financial company of some kind. So I said to him, what, is, what kind of meeting? I can't tell you. This is how they get you. You got to go there. Yeah. They, can't t they can't tell you anything about it, but you just got to go with an open mind. Yep. And then you listen, and I just looked at him and I said, "Dude, this is a, this is this is bullshit." Open checkbook too. <laughs> yeah, you got to go there with an open mind and an open check. It's a company called Transamerica, and they sell all kinds of it's financial. Not like, it's not like is it Transamerica that owns the Transamerica Pyramid in San Francisco? I try. I doubt it. Huh? I doubt it. I no, they probably so. took that name. Is it Transamerica uh, is insurance, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yes, they're insurance. They sell all kinds of insurance and, and, and like financial uh, instruments that you can buy. Well, and I'll tell you, like I, I myself, right after I got laid off, I was looking for work and all that shit. And I got on online and I started screwing around looking at these, you know, make millions of dollars at home type things. And I researched a lot of them and I looked at them and said, you know, these are obviously a joke. But I, I hooked on to this one. And I thought, okay, I'm going to check this out. And I sent my 50 bucks in, created my side email so I knew if something happened, I wasn't going to get sucked into anything else. Made a false email or whatever, or an extra email. And, and I started doing I gave him my 54 bucks, and, and then I canceled the card right after just because I was nervous about it in the first place. 
But I went through two or three courses, but after you get into this, you go into the third course or whatever it is, mm -hmm. it, it's exactly what they were talking about. You now have to invest $5,000 to get um, access to lists. And exactly. then once you get those lists, we can blast this stuff out and you'll get more people in. And then we'll move you up to the $10,000 That's list. That's a pyramid. And that's exactly what it was. And I said, I, as soon as they, I actually had contact with a person that was saying, oh, hey, you're going to make all kinds of money. I'm making all this money and da, 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 da. I went, you know, and I called my wife and I said, I think this is bullshit. What do you think? We both agreed it was bullshit. And I just shut it down, lost my 50 bucks and the card was, you know. Well, what's, but what's I him? continue on that email to get email after email after email from these fuckers. And they just don't stop. And I'm not even going to try and unsubscribe because you know what happens then. Right. But, wait, but, but, but they're I'm, all over was, the place. Was yeah. that always around these pyramid schemes? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. there were pyramid schemes in the beginning like, you know, Pat and Rob were talking about because my boss tried to get me into one. Come to a meeting. I said, fuck you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I got the name wrong. Primerica. Oh, oh Primerica? Okay, well, trans imagine if you said Charlie Prim Lateral Commission. Primerica. Primerica was the name of the company. But yeah. these people were doing yeah. this, you know, in the 90s and, and that's, just fucking each other, period. That's well, what the name tag was. You know, well, but, but, but as I watched this thing on Herbal Life, I just, I literally was getting mad. Yeah. I wanted yeah. to choke somebody. And, uh, and, that, and the Ackman and... It, what the and, hell's and, the other and guy's listen, name? listen, Phil. You know, you may th think about, oh, we should let everybody have free commerce and so on, but the fact is that these people prey on poor people, people who are not informed, who do not know things. And so does the I gypsy think, wait, 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 hold on a second. Uh, no, don't, don't excuse the gypsy scams. Uh, excuse it. No, I said that's no. You know, what I'm, what I'm, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying crime. is. These it's people, oil, these yeah. people need to be protected against the predators, and well, and, 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 and we're not doing our job, and we allow it to happen. Well, what happened to you know? Let the buyer beware, and, and because uh, it, because an idiot, be, uh, you be, know. because yeah. because, because I think I, 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 I think we bankrupt. owe it to our own I agree to with our that. own people. Ultimately, to affects point. us. We we need to we need to they get sick. They have no health insurance, for example. We need no means to protect them. with which we, to afford health yeah. insurance because they spend it all on blue, it all on some multi-level marketing cocksucking scheme. Then uh, we're all fucked. The only way that the gypsy scams work is they work on greed. So what happens is no, uh, they also uh, work on they, they, they also work on fail, to, fail. They also do, work. Do on, you understand what I'm saying? No, I, I, because you, what you forget is there are people who are poor in this country who are looking a way out of that poverty, and these people prey upon those people. As Some a matter of fact, if you watch this documentary on, uh, mm -hmm. on uh, what's the name of the company, Herbalife, Herbalife they, where yeah. they do their primary predatory uh, actions are in Latino communities, Latino poor Joe. Latino communities. But it's when you're when you're looking for a get rich scheme or something for nothing. If you're uh, poor, that's when you're uh, if you're poor, these people. If, no. If you're poor, then you're prey to that. Okay, but and it's not that so, you're prey to that out of out of greed. You're prey to that out of your own well, poverty. Th those things are but, illegal. Look, look at it from my angle. No, they're not. I, I, wasn't, they get I wasn't. I was. I wasn't uh, looking to get rich. I was just looking to make a living because I oh, had been working for forty one years. And now all of a sudden I don't have a job and I'm fucked. I'm looking for income. Yeah, no, I understand. And, and Believe me, I understand. I'm not necessarily looking to become a billionaire, but people like me get sucked into that shit. And nothing happens to them. I mean, they yeah. get they get screwed. The government says, oh, I'm sorry, you got screwed. And they, everybody moves yeah. on. Uh, Pat, I know. Patrick has his hand up. To say, I was just glad that I was there with my stepfather, and that he didn't go on his own, you know, volition, because I think he would have gotten sucked into it, um, and not out of greed, but out of the same thing that Kevin said. And he was still working, but he was looking for additional income, so yeah. that's why he agreed to go with me. And, I mean, I knew immediately when I walked in, just like Rob, yeah. that, I mean, this is a fucking cult. It's a yeah. scam. Yeah. Hey, 
I, I I look for additional income. I can never seem to make enough money. So I go shooting on Sundays. I make ear protection for shooters. It, it pays for my bullets. Uh, I, I shoot well, weddings. Thank God something's uh, paying yeah, for your that's bullets. A, that's, a, that's a tangible item. You're selling something. No, I understand. But, getting something. but I'm, I'm looking for ways to make more money to, or to supplement what I make. And so, uh, for instance, so I make the ear protection. Uh, I, I like cameras and I like, uh, I like photography. So to pay for my little hobby and to buy all this crap, I shoot weddings. And uh, so you know, uh, when I when I shoot a wedding, I make money. Yeah. And, and it and it pays for all my toys. That's you funny. Know? Yeah, but, but, if you're, but if you're, you're the Mexican guy down on the shitty part of town that just wants to get out of the shitty part of town, and you got eight thousand dollars to put down, and this guy takes it and says he's going to make it into sixteen, and then thirty-two, and then sixty-four. And then he turns around and fucks you in the ass. When it's too good to be true, it's too good well, to be yeah, true. Yeah, you know, and that's you got money, but, but, and you're in a Mexican and you're down reason, in the, in the, the ghetto. Reason, the re- you buy you buy Phil, some oranges Phil, and you Phil, set up. The on reason the we you have laws something? laws about this is not to protect you and me. We're we're smart. We know how to avoid this sort of thing. But there are people who are not worldly and don't yeah, know, they're and they're people. the ones that are prey to this. And, Correct. and and we need to we need to protect uh, these predatory people should be hung in a town square so far as I'm hey. concerned they're the worst yep. kind of human beings alive hey I was talking to a friend of mine today that I've known for over 40 years he's uh, in his 80s and uh, he's going to have to go into assisted living he said hey I'm going to a place that's twenty five hundred dollars a month but I only have twenty three hundred dollars a month coming in from Social Security and a, and a, and a little pension thing and uh, so he says well luckily I have some savings and uh, but you know he says hey you know this if, if you don't have uh, income as you get older you're fucked and and he's right you know, I, I look at it, I don't save anything. I spend everything I make. So what if there was a company that that was going to help him out, quote unquote, and but there was going to take Nobody, him in and yeah. it was going to give him, here, you, I'll give you that extra 200 bucks if you give me 500 and then I'll make it 800 and you'll be set and you'll keep going. That's, That's not true. It's never true. Well, it, yeah. <laughs> We know it, that, but yeah, and and you know, and he, and I hope he does too. The but, problem is that there's people out I there. I mean, that I don't think I think it. you're mixing up freedom uh, to uh, to do to do business with uh, the free uh, with the freedom to uh, rip people to off. Break. And, well, and I don't I, and, 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 and we have off. we we and but the fact that herbal life has been going on for what thirty years or something, yeah, well, yeah and they keep it doing 70s. it over and over again. They keep getting yeah. hit with suits and all kinds of things. They survive all of them. Uh, the fact that their their doors are even open, that they've and got I, these and I was buildings, you, you know. And I was telling you the other day when you brought that up, Alex. That my neighbor was an herbal life guy, and of course he's Latino. Yeah, but I'll tell it's you, funny. I'll tell you, you, you know, the equivalent to herbal life in a lot of ways is Scientology, you know. But yeah. it, but in the case of Scientology, they got they found this protective cloak called religion, okay, yes. and then they got they finally got the government to make them tax exempt. Oh my God, why yeah, did we that's... ever do that one? Yes, Patrick. Nice horses, I guess. Yeah. Did you watch um, Leah uh, Remini's? Uh, yes, doc- Leah Remnick. Rem, uh, Leah Remini. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that was fucking interesting. How, just like with the other types of pyramid scheme, that's a very good analogy. That every time you reach a different level, you had to keep paying out and paying out and paying out and paying out, and paying, out paying out, and people that are making income similar to any of us on here would be spending literally over the course of 10 years millions of dollars to buy the same shit that I thought was interesting, the same book just repackaged every couple of years, and they'd have to buy them. Uh, so, can I admit something, and this is a terrible thing to admit. Uh, who was Tom Cruise's uh, first wife, uh, the actress? Nicole no, no. No, before that. The Australian? Oh, Mimi Rogers. Mimi Rogers. Mimi uh, Rogers. The only two women that I've ever had on my radio show that gave me a hard-on as I was sitting there talking to them were Mimi Rogers and Leah Remini. And they were both Scientologists. 
So I guess I get a hard on for Scientology. I don't know. Leah yeah. Remini, I think, is your type. You oh know? yeah, oh yeah. Uh, I liked her a lot. She had that that Brooklyn uh, thing going for her, and you know, she was I, a little heavier. Uh, was she heavy at the time? No, or? she was just fine. She was, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. just a little yeah. softer. And and Mimi Rogers, man, that was the hottest woman I've ever I've ever sat next to. Wow. Yeah, but. It turns out they're both Scientologists. So what's wrong with me? <laughs> you got to get two cans, hold on to them with a meter, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and should, they say should. words and you see the reaction. Well, you know, I really admire Leah Remini because, uh, you know, after being brought up in that, I mean, she was her parents were Scientologists, so she was raised a Scientologist. Oh. But she yeah. managed at some point to say, I see the bullshit, and she yeah. got out. Uh and uh, I don't know, Mimi Rogers may still be a Scientologist. They probably all still are. I hear that, I hear that Travolta has actually kind of backed off a little bit out of Scientology. That some well, people I, they, are, they don't go to the gay route. You, 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 well, I don't know. But anyway, uh, if, uh, Mimi it, Rogers is very hot. Oh, Mimi Rogers. The Mimi Rogers I met was just you know I was just it was it was all I could do to cross my legs okay so that, <laughs> you know uh uh but uh yes uh, well i also i gotta tell you i was watching uh what was it i think it was uh who was it phil donny once and he had on some american nazis and they had a couple of american nazi women and i thought they were hot as shit so i don't know yeah you know, <laughs> It's the if, if this were World War II, I'd walk right into the gas chamber smiling. You know, I, 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 at least you'd die happy. It's the knee, yeah, you'd have a hard on walking in. Yeah. The knee-high boots and the riding crop. I mean, what? Yeah. 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 carried out, too. Ilsa She-Wolf of the SS, right. Uh, but, uh, you know, all I'm saying is is that, that, it, that we, we need to protect people from these people because the, the people that we're protecting, yes, they are not the brightest people in the world. Uh, let's say not the most sophisticated. And they need yeah. protection because that's why we have laws. They, not to protect you and I. We're, we can take care of ourselves. But to protect the, the uh, average citizen, and most of them are poor. Yes, Patrick? And I guess it started on the topic, but I just saw a commercial now. That you guys remember a spray on hair? Yeah, oh, yeah. sure. Yeah. Okay. Who doesn't? Yeah, I, look, I, 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 I still use it. Look. There's a new product out. There's a new product out, and um, it, they were just showing it. It's called Topic. T O P P I. Oh, yeah, I've seen that. Oh, I have that. I, I have it for gray hair. Yes. Uh, it works. I'm like, what the fuck is that? He's using I mean, that's my... <laughs> but see, you're paying for something, you're getting something. Yeah, it's it's like a, cal a collagen, and uh, these little flakes uh, spray out on, onto your... Or you can use the shaker or, or the little puffer. And, it's like and George what it does is it makes the hair fuller. He's obsessed with well, his if hair. You, no, 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 if, well, if you use pomade or... Or you know uh, some of these things, and it keeps the hair in place. And then you uh, use this; it it just kind of fills it in a little bit, and uh, and, it, and it works. It makes it look fuller. Like George Costanza. <laughs> uh, I don't know that it would work on you, Patrick. But <laughs> I bet you if he plays his answer machine, he'll remember uh, Greatest American Hero. That he fills the answer machine. Phil's <laughs> not here. <laughs> Well, Alex, can you be like really among just people uh, uh, that are just uh, so uh, greedy? Uh, what? What did you say, Tony? Can you be like people are just so greedy? Like, you know, they'll just, even people who are successful, like, how much do you need? Well, you wonder, you wonder why, like, this guy who runs, or I don't know if he still runs it, but run, ran Herbal Life when this documentary was made, had was a former guy, big guy at Disney. And, you know, he thinks it goes to this company. And, of course, he's probably making millions upon millions upon millions of dollars. And, and the, the question is, yeah, how much money do you need? You know, how many people, does he they, get to how many people do you walked, have to He fleece? walked away with it, too. He walked away with a lot of money, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, he did. Because he got pressure. He got yeah. pressured, so he just decided to resign. Yeah. And the first guy, the guy that originally opened it up, Hughes was his name, I think. He croaked. 
Yes, he, got, he had a heart attack. Yeah, and died. Yeah. And like in his 30s. I think, that, I think the thing that bugged me the most is those guys were manipulating the stock market, too, because that's a big, it's a big stock, you know, company in the in the stock it, market, the stock Herbalife. Market. Yeah. And those two, you know, it was a lot about the, what they call it, short short selling. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, yeah. The, the, the documentary itself is about a guy who shorts and has shorted, yeah. has shorted Herbalife over the years and has tried to make it disreputable so that it would lose money. Because if it that loses Ackman, money, Ackman, he yeah. makes money. I don't, yeah. I don't understand exactly how that works, but what you're doing is you're really betting that the stock's going to go down. Right, right. And, and then and you, you make buy, it. You, you buy a, I think it's called a put, uh, where uh, you can buy it at that lower price. Yeah. Uh, uh, so and um, uh, I, I had a friend that was a stock yeah. trader in the Pacific Exchange when it was there, and he yeah. was in a pit called the the Wang Pit. Wang was a uh, some sort of computer so, word so, processor. Sounds, sounds like a room full of dicks, if you want my yeah. opinion. But uh, and he, used, he used to trade. He used to trade Wang, and and he would always trade short. Wang. So uh, does Brian. Trade Wang. Short. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, you might remember Wang. It was like a word uh, word processor. Right, or, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, those things went the way of the dodo bird. But, yeah, uh, uh, yeah he, he he did all right. Yeah. But the thing is, that what was I going to say? That these, you know, these people have, have made a great deal of money. But I, I when I watched that documentary, um, uh, 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 Kevin... The the thing that I didn't really kind of feel good about was the guy it's about who was trying to short this company and then was doing everything to destroy it so that he would make a lot of money off because he he he's he has about a billion dollars into shorting um, yeah. uh, 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 this company. I, I, I didn't trust him. I just kept looking at him going, I don't trust that yeah. fucker. So I don't trust him, but I don't trust the company he's going after. I'm rooting for him to ruin that company, but I'm not <laughs> rooting for him to make yeah. money off of it. But you then know? you got the other guy that's doing the exact opposite. He's buying up stocks to make it better. Yeah. Oh, that was... So uh, you got these two was, fighting each other. Who, he's who, going who, long. Who was it? Was that Kirk Kikorian? No, it was... Uh, 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 I think it was... I, Ekman or something. Uh, I can't remember the Kikorian name. Kikorian was what they called no, one of those no, uh, no, raiders. No, 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 uh, no, no, uh, this uh, is green, green, green mail no, or something. No, this was a this was a big guy. Corporate. This was a big financial guy who was bought. They were both. Yeah, they're both big financial guys. Yeah, but I'm trying to remember. I, th I thought it was maybe Kirk Kikorian, but it wasn't. It was somebody else. I'm trying to remember. No, I'm gonna look if it up I said real quick. His, if I said his name, everybody would know what we were talking about. He actually bought into Herbal Life. Yeah. Because he didn't like both. because he didn't like the guy who was trying to short it, so right, it was like exactly. becoming this pissing match. It's a great documentary. It's on what Netflix was it or yeah yeah, yeah Netflix, and it, and it's called uh, Selling Low or something. I can't remember the title of it. But. Let's see, it's uh, called Betting on Zero. Betting on Zero, right? It says Herbalife was founded in 1980. Yeah, it's been around a long time. Oh, I thought it was around longer than that. Really? Yeah. Carl Carl Icon was the other. Uh, Carl, guy. Carl Icon, Icon, that's the guy. Yeah, he's the one that bought and was fighting with Ackman. Yeah, and the and he hates Ackman, so that's why he was buying Herbalife. Yeah. Life. They were pissing Carl, all over each other. The Carl whole Icon thing. also bought TWA. Yeah, uh, and I believe that he's part of uh, Trump's uh, 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 team. He was he was talking about Carl Icon being one of his uh, advisors. Yeah, An another reason to. Yeah, another reason to hate Carl Icahn. You know, we've spent we've spent the whole night here, and not once have we brought up Donald Trump, and not once have we come up talked about this voodoo medical plan the Republicans are working on. You know, the one that yeah, nobody's going to know just about. Put it out. We don't know anything about it. <laughs> Uh, did they uh, did they just put it out? I I think Trump Tomorrow. said he wanted it to be yeah he wanted it to be nicer <laughs> or kinder yeah well, less mean less mean yeah yeah well wait until you see how Americans are going to get screwed on that one okay mm -hmm. so and that will be that will be a good topic for tomorrow right all right uh, anyway hey I want to thank you all for having joined us this evening uh, thanks to Rob Alfano. We started off with just two people. And we wound up with, uh, with with six, so that's good. Patrick, thank you. Appreciate it.
Tony, thank you. Phil, thank you. Kevin, thank you. And, of course, Brian, thank you so very much. And hopefully we'll see you all again tomorrow. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye, everybody. Okay, that's it. That's our uh, that's our panel for tonight, and that's our, uh, our program for tonight. Uh, we'll be back again tomorrow night. Stay tuned now for the intersection, which follows immediately over this same gab net. Uh, and uh, that's with Jack and Amy. And then after that, at uh, 1 o'clock in the morning, it's Connections. Meanwhile, I'm Alex Bennett. I'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? <laughs>